with uh, Fred Gregory, our astronaut advisor, and uh, I think we are down to about, um, well, you're on the phone there, to Yeah, we're down we're to about nine minutes. I think the well, countdown actually, has uh, begun or is about to begin. Yeah, and we've come out of the uh, T-minus nine-minute hole. We're about at seven minutes, and they are, well, they are pulling away the white room. If you look right now, you can see the white room actually moving away from the orbiter. There was some uh, question about uh, five, ten minutes ago. Apparently, there was a ship straying into the area in which one of the solid... Uh, the uh, rocket boosters was expected to fall. Well, the boosters fall several, uh, well, about 150 miles off the coast of Florida, and uh, apparently a ship had wandered in, but uh, I think the NASA fleet has moved it out safely. There are no constraints at all for the launch. So we're all set for a 7.19 Eastern a time very launch. Successful launch. It has gone with uh, remarkable smoothness so far. I guess practice makes perfect. This fifth uh, has been probably the smoothest countdown thus far, has it not? I think so. It certainly seems that way. Well, um, what are the exact procedures we'll be able to Eight actually see now? We can actually Eight hear the uh, mission control from the Kennedy Space Center there, and maybe we could, uh, as far as possible, let them and tell us what's going on. I think that would be good. a good idea, Shannon. Yeah, we just let them do the talking and uh, to kind of absorb it. There's a rhythm in these last minutes, and it... Uh, Transmit DSM-1500. And it's moving zero, zero. relentlessly now. Mark. About six minutes, about six seconds before launch, the main engines will light, and uh, T zero or launch is the time that the solid rockets launch. We'll be looking for three gray DFI. Oh, we got three gray. Okay. We're listening to the voice of Hugh. Harris of Mission Control of the Kennedy Space Center, and uh, we'll be uh, letting him guide us through up to launch at 7.19 Eastern Time. Hey, Al Cowden, we have a go for APU start. They are now just beginning to start the auxiliary power units. Uh, those are the uh, hydraulic units that operate the flight control systems on the orbit. surfaces and main engine for Four minutes, 49 seconds, and counting. Four minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. The firing circuit for the solid rocket boosters, ignition, and rain safety destruct devices have been armed by a switch called a safe and arm device. The system is then inhibited to prevent premature ignition. Four minutes, four minutes, 15 seconds, and counting. The main fuel valve heaters at the operation for engine start. The main engines on the orbiter will actually be started in 6.8 seconds, and it takes two seconds for them to reach all the percent. The first commercial flight for the shuttle. Yes, it is. Uh, something we're very proud of. We have two satellites to carry up for commercial companies. And they have been paid for, bought and paid for. It's true. The space has been bought and paid for. And it was a bargain for them. A bargain for them. Sort of a lost leader. The price goes up in, in about a year or so, I, That's true. I gather. Eight million dollars for one satellite, nine million for the other. The first satellite will be deposited in space about eight hours after launch. The shuttle is now on internal power. On the sixth orbit, I believe. That's correct. And the other communication satellite will be deposited tomorrow during the 22nd orbit. Correct. The engine gimbal or movement check of the main engines of the orbiter is underway to ensure that they're ready to control the flight. The voice of Hugh Harris. Coming up on the three-minute point. Three minutes. T minus three minutes and counting. Everything going smoothly. T minus two minutes, 55 seconds. The liquid oxygen valve for filling the external tank is closed and pressurization has begun. After the tank is pressurized, the hold capability is limited to three minutes and 36 seconds. Four T minus two minutes, 40 seconds. Hans Brand, Bob Obermeyer, the Bill Lenore, and Joe and Allen. Arm, uh, will be retracted shortly. Four and a half million pounds seconds and counting. of spacecraft. The fuel cells ground on supply the of oxygen and hydrogen has been terminated, and the vehicle is now on its onboard supply. And the gaseous oxygen vent arm is being retracted, lifting off of the nose of the external tank. The little T minus two beanie cap is being pulled away. Counting. The main engines have been moved to their start position. And the astronauts have cleared the caution and warning memories of their onboard computers and verified that there are no unexpected errors. 
One minute, 57 seconds. The liquid hydrogen vent valve has been closed and flight pressurization is underway. The main engines ignite at 6.8 seconds before launch. One minute, 45 seconds. The computer will automatically verify the readiness of the main engines at the T-minus one minute point. Coming up on 90 seconds. T-minus 90 seconds and counting. Everything going smoothly as we look for a liftoff of STS-5. On this flight, the first spacewalk by American astronauts in some nine years. That'll take minute, place on Sunday. 20 seconds and counting. The liquid hydrogen tank now is at flight pressure. Coming up on the one minute point in our countdown. T minus one minute and counting. The firing system for the sound suppression system on the pad is armed. T minus 55 seconds. The hydrogen igniters under the orbiter's engines have been armed. These devices are used to ensure that any hydrogen flowing through the engines prior to ignition does not accumulate, causing a small explosion. T minus 40 seconds. We are just seconds away from switching command of the countdown from the ground computers to the onboard computers. And, seconds and the away SRB from the development fifth flight flight of the Columbia. recorders are on. And we have a go for auto sequence start. T minus 21 seconds and counting. The SRB nozzles are being moved through a test pattern to launch position. T minus 15 seconds. 13, 12, 11, 10, we are go for main engine ignition. Six, we have main engine ignition. Three, two, one, and solid motor ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of the first operational space shuttle mission with two satellites on board. Look at that the show. Has cleared the tower. Houston now controlling mission control confirms roll maneuver starting. Magnificent launch. 20 seconds, thrust looks good. 26 seconds, roll maneuver completed. 30 seconds, Columbia now one nautical mile in altitude, throttling engines down to 85% of its program. Crew of four on its way. Mark 40 seconds, Columbia now two and a half nautical miles in altitude, one nautical mile down range. Mark 50 seconds coming up now and create a maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. 55 seconds, Columbia now four and a half nautical miles altitude. Mark one minute, pass through max Q, still looking good. Uh, throttling engines back to 100%, giving a go at throttle up. Columbia, this is Houston, you go at throttle up. Pressure, go at throttle up. Mark one minute, 10 seconds, Columbia now seven nautical miles in altitude, five nautical miles down range. Mark, one minute, 20 seconds, uh, Columbia now 10 nautical miles in altitude, 7 nautical miles down range. Columbia Houston, we're monitoring a slightly depressed trajectory expected because of the headwinds. Roger, One minute, 35 seconds, I was Capcom Bob Stewart advising the crew a slight depression because of the headwind. Columbia moving out now is pre-planned on three good engines. One minute, 45 seconds. A brand over Meyer, Lenore, Allen, uh, now coming to the last traces of the Earth's atmosphere. Columbia now 19 nautical miles in altitude, 18 nautical miles down range. <coughs> and they're riding upside down. Mark, two minutes. Matter. Standing Move by now for solid rocket down. booster separation okay. confirmation. Roger, PC. Columbia now 25 nautical miles in altitude. And there is the separation of the solid rocket boosters. T Two minutes, 15 seconds. Confirm solid rocket booster separation. On the last flight, they fell into the Atlantic Ocean Two minutes, and sank. 22 seconds. Onboard guidance is converging in program. Columbia is now steering for a precise window in space for main engine cutoff. 31 nautical miles in altitude, 43 nautical miles down range. Main engine cutoff, the next big step. Columbia, this is Houston. Your first stage was uh, low on performance this morning. Okay, fine. Two minutes, 40, two minutes, 49 seconds. Columbia now 37 nautical miles in altitude, uh, 58 nautical miles down range. Velocity now reading 6,500 feet per second. 
the shuttle still riding Fire under that huge minutes. external fuel tank. And that tank will be jettisoned a bit later on. The only part of the shuttle that is not reusable. Two engine tail capability. Two engine tail capability. Three minutes, 15 seconds. I call up by Capcom. Bob Stewart says that the Columbia now has landing capability at the car airport should one engine go out. Three minutes, 25 seconds. Columbia now 46 nautical miles in altitude, 88 nautical miles downrange. Three minutes, 32 seconds. Return status check and mission control by flight director Tom Holloway. The uh, crew aboard Columbia, given a go to continue. Three minutes, 40 seconds. It appears Columbia to have been a perfect nautical launch. Miles altitude, 105 nautical miles down range. Standing by now for negative return. Negative return is sort of a point of no return. They cannot return now to the launch site.